How are you doing? Welcome to uh, Wednesday evening Facebook Live. Today we're going to talk about Fusion 360. It's 8 p.m. here in upstate New York, so um, I'm going to enjoy one of these. While we're talking some Fusion 360. Now remember, these live stream here, I can see that we always got William in here, David is here. Absolutely awesome to see you guys. So remember, these live streams on Facebook, Wednesday evenings, is your opportunity to ask any question you got. Uh, put them in the question area. We'll stop what we're doing, and uh, we kind of like try to address that uh, those questions the best we absolutely can. Uh, so this is a little bit different than the YouTube live streams uh, in the matter that here we actually stop and we're talking about it. This is absolutely beginner. So it's just you and I, uh, and maybe a beer if, if you are in the right time zone or if you have the desire. Um, so anything goes. There's no, you know, if you have a question, then probably 80 other people have a question too. Uh, I can see we got Bob here. Uh, Kevin is here. Yay. Thank you for uh, making it for a live session. Kevin, really appreciate it. Matthew. Um, David uh, Jr. is here. Um, glad that you, you found it. Jeremy. So, um, oh. Quick question from Kevin. What is behind you? They used to be guitars. Huh? So I'm imagining that you're talking, Kevin, about this device uh, sitting right over here. Um, that is a, um, it's a Haas simulator. So for a CNC machine, um, you have a control on the CNC machine to, to operate one of those. This is kind of like a simulator. It's used in, uh, in most classrooms, I would think. Uh, what you can do is you can, in Fusion, you can create the cam code and then you can load it up uh, on this thing behind me and check that the code is all all good. Um, I kind of like have it a little bit as a wall art. I don't really necessarily use it as much as it should be used. But yeah, mostly for education, for CNC machining. Hope that answered that. Um, Jeremy, thank you for uh, for writing that. And we got Christian here. Um, cool. All right. So I hope that, that that helps. Yeah, so uh, today's topic, uh, what we're gonna model up today is, um, I got a question from somebody a while back in regards to, I don't know if I can get a good view of this. It, this is a cab that goes at the end of like, if you wanna close off like a garden hose style. Um, it actually normally has an, an O-ring or like a, not an O-ring, there's a wash flat washer stuck inside of in here. Uh, but it's, somebody asked me about something about doing threads. And I have done some live streams on it before, but this one has some threads in it. Uh, it has some, some cutouts in it. And I thought maybe that was a pretty good um, absolute uh, beginner thing to do. Uh, so we're going to be doing some threads. We're going to talk about uh, doing some patterings. We're going to talk about adding some fillets and things like that. Um, but again, oh, Bob asked, where can I get one? Contact Haas. I think they're one of those simulators. I think they're about $1,600. I could be wrong. Uh, $1,600 US. Um, like I say, they don't really do anything productive. So I don't know. Uh, you're probably better off going out buying like a small desktop CNC or something instead. So let's stop me yapping here uh, and uh, let's get into Fusion. With these live streams, uh, Absolute Beginner, I like to start from scratch. Um, I know some of you guys have watched these before, but just to kind of like make sure that if you're just joining for the first time, there's two things that I like to do whenever I am firing up Fusion 360 from, from scratch. Um, um, and that is I go up on this view cube up here and I right click on that and I change orthographic to perspective with auto faces. So this view cube, right click on that and change that to perspective with auto faces. The other thing I like to do is I like to move down here to the bottom. I like to click the little uh, grid um, and snap area down here. I like to turn off layout grid and snap to grid. This is the only things that I do uh, when you know, if I have a, a, a brand new installment of Fusion 360, not that you should really have to start over ever, but just so you know, that's kind of like the things that I do. So if anybody is asking, um, you know, then that's kind of like where it goes. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start modeling something up here. 
Canadian beer. It's good. Um, so this little cap uh, thing here, um, I, I've said it before on these live streams, the hardest thing is always figuring out where to start, right? Like you're looking at that blank cameras on Fusion and you're like, okay, I know I want to end up with something that looks something like this, but where should I start? Well, this one here, I think this shape uh, probably kind of maybe gives it away. Let's just start out with a round circle and extrude out some thickness on it. So let's go in and, uh, and start in here. And uh, all right, I can see that um, John put in here. Yes. Um, you, you know what, John? You might be right that you actually on, John says a, a, a good question here about, you can actually program the simulator and send it to the machine. So that's a good point, let's make sure. Um, I, I actually, I haven't tried that, but you can program uh, a CNC machine from just the control on a house. We're talking about that device right there. Um, so you don't have to have Fusion to program a house machine. You could just do it right in the control. Um, I'm not sure if you could actually do that and post it out. I think you're probably right. You probably could do that. I haven't tried it. Uh, so that, that's a good uh, that's a good question. Um, all right. Uh, William has a question. Not sure if he can help, but lately I've been running into problems when going back in history and trying to update a sketch. It get blown out of the water, all gets bucked up. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. All right, you know what? Let's talk about that in this one here. We have some, some uh, let's do that on this part. So um, inside of Fusion, remember, um, so open up a, a new part here. Remember, you have the origin. You can turn it on on the light bulb over here if that helps you. There's two places you can sketch uh, inside of Fusion 360, either on a face or on a plane. Uh, right now, we don't have a face because we don't have anything uh, on the screen here yet. Uh, so we're going to have to do it on, on a plane. Now, we have these three planes uh, here. And uh, they kind of resemble front, right, top, right? So that will be front, right, and top. But I normally tell people not to worry too much about, you know, where you start. I think this comes more down to when you're using cam or if you're 3D printing, and then the other utilities can be used for that. Um, all right, so David is asking, is there a way, an easy way to extrude at an ankle, aka like a strap? Gosset to a weld face. Um, you know what, David? We, um, we, you probably, the easiest thing is maybe to use something like a, uh, a sweep for that. So you could, uh, you could create, you know, a rectangle and then you could uh, extrude that in an angle if I get what you're saying. Well, let me just show you that. This was not, let's just, <laughs> this is live streaming. Let's just answer David's question because, you know, maybe more people are thinking that that's more interesting than doing this little thing. We get back to this one. Hang on. Cheers. Thank you, David. So one way you could do that is we could start a sketch on this face here. We'll come back to the round part in a second. Uh, one way to do it is we could start a sketch here. Uh, we could start a rectangle. Remember, there's different rectangles uh, up here, whatever you want. So like center rectangle. Let's just extrude something up here we should always fully define this so let's make it 50 by 50. one rectangle okay uh so that is just sitting flat on on that face there uh then we could start a second sketch so this was just one sketch it's not very exciting let's open another sketch and uh, let's click on this side view so look at how the screen turned and let's just create a line that goes up here so let's just place it up like that um, and um, we probably want some kind of a, uh, a dimension. So we can select from here to here. And uh, let's just make it 51 just to be awkward instead of 45. So we have two sketches. Hit stop sketch. So we had the first sketch we created right here. The second sketch uh, that is kind of sitting right there. By the way, I'm rotating by holding down shift on my keyboard and the middle mouse button on my mouse. Now, if you go over and you use uh, sweep, you can select the rectangle. You can select, that was the first profile. That's the profile was the rectangle. And the path is uh, this line here. And uh, now you have an extrusion 
that is uh, going extruding in an angle. Um, you can actually uh, play around with also uh, the ends. So you can go, uh, well, actually, I guess you can't do it on this one here. So never mind. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things. You can also, um, if you're in here, so that, I hope that answers your question. You could add a taper angle uh, also. So we can go uh, five degrees plus or minus, depending on what direction you want to go in. So now we can narrow. And as you can see here, you could also uh, twist it uh, around here, 25, maybe don't do much. Let's do 420, no, 325, something. Uh oh, 30, oh, so it can only go, so the, it can't actually go higher than it starts revving around itself. This is probably not great with a, uh, with a rectangle. So the solid can't over cut itself, but you can see here now it's kind of like twisted around. Okay, I hope that that answered your question. Um, cool, yeah, did awesome. All right, Isaac here, absolutely awesome to see you. Um, Gustavo, thank you for all the great tutorials. Uh, have I had a chance to use the slides app? Slice app. Uh, so welcome. Really enjoying to do these. I have not used the slicer app. Um, it is on my list. Um, my good friend, colleague, I believe Aaron uh, Magnin have done that. Uh, and I think it's probably, probably up on the Fusion channel. Uh, so if you have any specific questions, um, you can email him, email me, and then I'll forward it to him. Um, my email, let me put my email address in the uh, comment area here, just so you have it. My email address is lars.christensen at autodesk.com. Just so you know. Ooh, I almost hit end broadcast. That would have been bad. Uh, okay. So I hope that that, uh, that kind of like uh, answered that. David seems to, he was happy with, with this little example. Uh, so that is awesome. Let's just uh, start a new. So if you want to start over, you can actually just go up here and you can click on the X up here. And I'm not going to save this. And now we're back to where we were before. Okay. That's awesome. Exactly what these live streams are for is for this stuff. So back to this little cap uh here and i was talking about so there's a thread inside of it that's all about i'm trying to hold it in the light can you see the thread i hope this is not right in your face um and there's some patterns up on top so let's start with the easy part we're going to open a new sketch up here and uh, i'm just going to select this face over here i could really select any of the faces uh so don't you know there's no rules <laughs> so click on the face and we're starting the sketch there I'm gonna hit C for circle, um, and then I'm gonna make sure that I snap. You see, we have kind of like that origin right there in the center. I'll make sure I start my my uh, my sketch right in that origin. You can see my cursor changes from a cross to a uh, a square, and I'm gonna left click and start dragging out, and that gives me uh, that circle uh, here. Uh, you always want to make sure that. Well, I should say not always, but it's a 99% of the time, you want to put your first sketch somewhere to the origin. Uh, this one here is going to be 32 millimeters in diameter. I measured it. So I'm going to type that in, hit enter, and uh, hit enter again just to verify it. Um, and you will see that the sketch is uh, now black. That's what we're going to go for. Uh, we're going to talk more about constraints uh, later on. Um, let's extrude this one. So to extrude, um, right now it's just a 2D sketch, right? Hold down shift and middle mouse button. It's just like this circle sitting on a, on a plane. There's not much exciting about that. Uh, let's hit Q for press pull. Um, and uh, now when I click that, you will see we get, uh, the, this, we get like a blue shadow. Again, middle mouse button on my mouse and the uh, shift, I can rotate around and you get like this arrow. And I always drag the arrow. Every time I have an arrow, I like to kind of like drag or whatever direction you want. And let's give it uh, some thickness, in this case here, 18 uh, millimeters. Type that in and hit enter, okay? So um, now we have kind of like the outside shape of our little uh, cap here. All right. Um, Kevin asks, when you make a circle, is there any advantage to keep the line horizontal or vertical, the line that shows the diameter? No, that's really just a, uh, that's really just a measurement. Um, if we go back in here, you can go down. Oh, so that's just probably say that. So we have the history down here, right? We're going to go back 
and talk about moving around in history. If I right click on this, so down here you have the sketch, that was the circle, and then the extrusion was turning it into like this 3D shape. If we right click on the sketch and hit edit sketch, we're coming back in here again. And this dimension here, uh, I'm assuming that's the one you're talking about, doesn't really do anything other than just a reference that this one is, uh, is 32. Um, John is saying he wants to try the slicer. Uh, yeah, it's a really cool tool, really cool app. Um, I think, I'm not sure who made it. I think it is internal Autodesk, maybe Patrick Greensbury or some other very smart dude created. All right, let me get out of the sketch. So we have this, this thing here. Um, so that's kind of like our first uh, disc. Um, the next thing I probably would add into this thing is the actually thread uh, that is in here. And this, you know, I'm sitting in the United States, so this is probably some kind of, uh, I don't know what you're actually using on a garden hose in the United States, probably something strange. Um, I don't know, seven, three, quarter, I don't know. Um, but let's have, let, make a hole in here uh, for for the thread. So I'm actually gonna almost do it like the same way you would if you were going to uh, to make it, that I'm gonna drill a hole. Um, there's different ways you can do this, but I'm just gonna take the same approach as we just did before. But now, opening my sketch, um, I can actually do it this face. I don't have to use uh, we have that origin up here. Remember, we can turn that back on. Um, I, actually, I could select that because it's sitting on the same area as as the face. Um, there's no advantage to use the plane over the face, really, unless you want to start getting technical. So I'm just going to hit here on a create new sketch and select that face right there. And now I'm kind of like looking straight at that. I'm going to hit C for circle again and uh, make sure that I snap back into the center or the origin and move this one out. And this one here, I'm gonna make this 21 uh, millimeters and uh, hit enter uh, to place that there. So now we kind of have that, um, that sketch sitting right there. Now I'm gonna use that Q again, because the, Q, the, the press pull is smart, right? It knows we extrude it in one way. If we pull it in one direction, then it becomes another solid, as you can see here. Or we can drag it the other way and then it becomes red and uh, then uh, it actually becomes uh, a cut. If you see it's red, it's a cut. Um, now, one thing I wanted to point out is that you could, of course, just drag. Uh, if you drag it all the way through, then you get a hole all the way through the part. But I actually just kind of like wanted to stop in here somewhere. Um, there's different options uh, in here. Now, <clears throat> I remember that I extruded the first portion 18. So if I want to keep a, um, a distance of, let's say, a thickness of two millimeters, then we can quickly do the math and say that 16 uh, would, be, would be the case here. Uh, we could hit enter, and now we have uh, kind of like a, a two millimeter wall in here. We can actually go up here to um, the section analysis under inspection, and uh, if I select uh, this plane in here, you will see that we kind of get uh, this, this area here. Now, I wanna talk later on um, about parametric uh, modeling um, and, and, and some of, some of the, the advantage of that. If you're brand new, uh, don't get overly confused about what I'm gonna show you next, but I just wanna show kind of like the possibilities in here. So the way we did this was we extruded the first thing 18, the second, 16 because we knew that we wanted a two millimeter thickness. But if there is a design change, let's say we go back into that first extrusion, right click and hit edit feature. And instead of doing it 18, uh, well, let's do it, um, you know, 28, for example. So making it that much longer and, and hit okay, then you will see that our, our extrusion now is still only 16 deep. Um, if we go back in to do another section analysis, you will see that now we got a much bigger thickness here. There's nothing really necessarily wrong about this technique. You could absolutely do this. I wouldn't, I mean, I think that people are spending way too much time on, on trying to do things the absolutely right way. But let me show you a little technique. If we go back into our cut here to the hole where we did the calculation in our head of, uh, of two millimeters, we could actually, instead of saying a distance, we could say to an object. 
And if I select to an object, that means that the whole depth is going to go uh, to an, an object face. And that could be this face here, though that would create the hole all the way through, but you could actually add a, um, a distance in here, an offset uh, of uh, minus two, what will now mean that we have said that the cut, the center hole, will go to this back face offset by two. Now, if I hit okay to that, now it doesn't matter what I'm changing that first um, length to, the 18, or the 28, that will always now be a two millimeter thickness down in, in the bottom. So if you're brand spanking new, if this is your first time you're ever seeing uh, Fusion 360, don't panic about this. Don't you know think that, oh my goodness, how am I gonna contain all this? You just need to be aware of that these things exist. Uh, Kevin asked a good question. Any reason you didn't use the offset for the second circle? Um, so if we, we can actually roll back here. So down here in the feature tree, you can actually grab right here and I can move all the way back to kind of where I was in history when I did that circle. So the way I did it was I said, create a new sketch. I clicked on this face. I hit C for circle. I created a 21 um, that millimeter diameter circle. And that was what I extrude. What Kevin suggests is instead of doing this, uh, what I could do was I could actually go up and do an offset. There's also an O for offset. Offset, and I could offset this outer edge into uh, create uh, that diameter. Um, so this would be just as, as well. The reason I didn't do it, Kevin, was because I measured the hole and I measured it to be 21. So that was the value I knew. Now uh, I gotta start doing some math. I gotta say that the outer diameter is 32 um, minus uh, the 21. And well, actually the 21, is that divided by two? Maybe it is. All right, now I'm gonna have to do math in here and I can't, well, yeah, there will be, so now it's an offset for diameter. So it would be, what will you do? You will do brackets then. Wow. Kevin, you make me work. Divided by two, is that right? It will still be minus. There we go. So minus, so you can uh, get to show another great thing, Kevin. Uh, you can do math in here, but this became a lot harder since the 21 was what I had. But yes, that's my only reason. But we got to show you, you can actually offset the sketch geometry. What many times is absolutely awesome. Um, for here, whew, it got me sweating a little. All right. Get out of that. Get back to where we had our hole uh, through here. All right, so um, I hope this is useful. Um, you know, you let me, you let me know. Cheers. If you just join, I can see we got a couple of people joining. What we are modeling up here is a little cap with a little bit of thread in it. There's some pattern on the outside of it. Um, Absolutely beginner here on the Facebook live stream. So any questions, throw them in there and we'll start to answer them right out of the gate uh, as we're going through this. So don't hold back. Okay, so now I want to talk a little, I'm going to turn the origin off. So I'm going to hit the light bulb up here just because the origin is a little bit in my way. Click that little light bulb, turn that off. Now let's talk a little bit about threats. Um, so there's a really cool tool inside of Fusion. If you're going to create, as an area here, called threads. So you click on that and uh, you will see that it's asking for a face and we can select that face that we, we cut there. Now, um, there's a couple of different options I wanna to talk to you about, about this function. First of all, Fusion tries to find out, depending on the diameter you specified, uh, it's trying to, to, uh, to figure out what thread is you're using. So it knows I'm using metric it know that I used uh, 21. So it actually tries to throw in a M20 uh, H6 class uh, right in here. But be aware that there's a lot of, of, of different uh, options uh, in here. Um, for example, like pipe threads, that might be actually be good if you were, uh, if you were doing, 
something something like this maybe uh, now there's a couple of other things I want to show you in here I'm just gonna leave these check marks up here right now and just hit OK to this and show you what we got what we actually have here hold shift middle mouse button to spin around is not a threat um, it is a bitmap or a picture uh, to resemble uh, the threat and this is something that care companies have done ever since as far as I know and the reason for that is that um, you know when it comes to to Fusion 360 uh, or comes to a 3D CAD system a mechanical uh, CAD system one of the things that is important to remember is that it's a mechanical CAD software it calculates absolutely everything that is going on in there it's constantly making sure that everything is to the right size and you know it's 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 uh, watertight solids and stuff like that so what we used to experience in the olden days I got some gray hair uh, was that as soon as you started doing like a real thread that became a lot of faces and it took the software a long time to calculate it could really just slow it down it can probably still do that if you had like a big assembly with all kinds of threads into it um, so then it will show you uh, this bitmap but um, one of the neat things uh, about uh, in here is that if you go in and we right click and we go into edit feature then we actually have a, a, a box in here that is called model and you click on that and then fusion will actually uh, provide you with uh, the model threat and I one of the things I did I have a live stream I did on YouTube about this and uh, I'll be more than happy uh, to to share that um, if you send me an email I'll send you a link I actually went in and I, I, I verified that this is the the right thread uh, compared to like the machinist handbook so um, if especially somebody want to 3d print this uh, you probably still have to work tolerances on your machine um, all right a couple of questions here um, let's see we got robbed here absolutely awesome uh, we got Steve uh, what is the best way to put text on a curved surface <laughs> um, yes um, I really think that um, I really hope the developers are probably working hopefully working hard uh, on that um, right now Steve it's actually I feel like a little bit of a there's a way to do it um, but it takes a little bit of work around I don't want to dive down that hole right now Steve send me an email last.christiansonrouters.com and I'll definitely be happy to try to send you something on that um, Brandon is asking a good question. Any buzz around Autodesk about NPT threat support? Um, man, I really wish that uh, you know that is coming. Um, that is coming too. Uh, there is, um, you know, I, I think that everybody is aware of that. That is something that needs to be uh, to be supported better than than it is uh, right now. So, yeah, I don't have any. I don't have any updates since probably since the last time I, I spoke about it um, hopefully sooner or later another thing I want to show you in here is uh, you will see that we have a checkbox here for full length if I uncheck that um, we actually get uh, a couple of different options in here so um, we could actually start playing with with the length of this uh, so you see that it defaults to 10 millimeters um, so if I hit OK to that uh, you will see that the thread only goes 10 millimeters down um, in here. Well, it's actually probably good with what we're modeling up here because we have like this flat washer that's going to sit down in, in the bottom uh, in there. So be aware of that option is in there where you can, you can actually play around with, uh, with, with the thread. Okay, we're going to come back to the thread in a little bit later, uh, but let's just leave that, uh, leave that right there. Cool. Um, all right. Hey, I'm glad that you uh, <laughs> glad you understand, Steve. Uh, yes, send me an email and, and I'll send you something on that. We can talk more about exactly what, what you're trying to do. All right. The next thing I wanted to, um, to I'm, I should say cheers. Um, the next thing on this part that I think is kind of interesting is these small uh, steps uh, that is up here on top. Um, 
So we can start like adding those. And, and actually, here's a good question. Uh, are these are these bumps that is, I'm trying to get my camera to focus, but it probably focuses on my forehead. <laughs> um, is these bumps or are these slots? I probably would think that they are slots. Actually, the way I measured it, they will be slots, so I shouldn't just ask the question. All right, so let's go in and look at that. How we do that? Um, I actually think that this time, so I started the first sketch on this face. Let's sketch on this face here, just because there's nothing on there. Maybe make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start another sketch, and I'm gonna just start on this face here, and um, click here, and then we kind of like normal too. Now here's a little trick that I sometimes do when I'm modeling things up. Uh, I'm gonna model up one of these slots, and then uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, and, and, and cut one slot, and then I'm gonna, gonna kind of like patterning it around. Sometimes I'll just go up here and select like a two point rectangle, and I'll just sketch the rectangle somewhere a little bit out of space. Like I know I want it vertical, um, but just kind of like getting it out here and then I can kind of start, I don't know, somewhat working with it and thinking about where do I actually want it. So I know that I want this rectangle. I'm gonna hit escape. You see how I have the rectangle command activated? See how I look at my mouse right there? If I hit escape, then I'm out at it. I get my white cursor again. Um, so um, I know I wanna place this vertical over here. So one trick is actually to create some helping geometry to do that. So I'm gonna go over here and hit line, and I'm gonna make sure the line snaps into to the origin like we did before. And I can just sketch a line like out in space, and I'll do this sometimes, just out in space, uh, and hit the little green check mark. I don't really care how long this this part is. And then what we will do is we will use uh, these constraints over here to kind of tie things down along with some dimensions. Now the rule uh, is to try to use as many of these constraints uh, before you start using dimensions. It just makes things a little less cluttered. Um, I also have a live stream on these, so email me. Um, but one of my favorite ones, and one of the ones that probably you should know about is the symmetry one. Um, so if I go over here and hit symmetry, you will see that I get like a little symmetry icon. And the way the symmetry works, you gotta know the steps, that's the hardest part. Is symmetry, you select one point, select the other point, and then select the line and then they will now be symmetrical. What means that if I drag this corner, see how it's symmetrical? Right there. Um, William is saying that you forgot to hit the X. Yes, I, well, I, I should, or should I? <laughs> I don't know, you be the judge. What he means, what William means, it's true, is this line that I created is really a construction geometry. Uh, I'm not gonna use that for anything. I'm gonna use this rectangle for the cutout, but this line here is really for reference. So what you can do is you can either select the line and you can hit X on your keyboard and it turns into what is called a construction line. You would actually see you can also do it over here. So if I undo it again, I have the line, you can select the line and you can go over here and click construction. Uh, this means that the line is not really used for any extrusion. However, it wasn't, it, it, it was not because I forgot to do it, but it's actually fairly rare inside of Fusion where you actually need that to be a construction. Um, and now we maybe get a little bit more into best practices, because if I knew that I had to share this file with somebody else, somebody else maybe had to look at it, I would do it as a construction, because then when they look at it, they're like, oh, this is just a reference line. It doesn't matter. But if you're just modeling for yourself, you actually don't need to make it into a, uh, a construction line. Um, I'll show you by, by leaving it undone here so you can see what I'm talking about. But that's a good point, uh, William. I, I, that, that's a good point. Okay, so um, our rectangle is still blue. And the easiest way when you're looking at a rectangle is still blue, the easy way to find out what is wrong with it is grabbing a corner, hold down your left mouse button, and just start dragging it around. So a couple of things I can see is I don't have any width on it, so maybe I want to add that. So I'm gonna hit D for dimension, 
D for dimension and just click on this line here and I get some kind of a dimension here. I don't know how wide I'm gonna make this one. Maybe we make it two, okay? Uh, so, so that will work uh, like that. Now, another thing uh, we maybe want to do is we wanna control the depth of this slot. I'm gonna show you a little trick with this. Um, so I actually want a dimension from this tendency of this arc down to this line right here. Now, if you just go ahead and you click on the, on the arc or the circle and on the line, you will see that it defaults to be a center dimen dimension. That's default. Now, it could, of course, be used here, but I really, I'm lazy. I really just want the tangencies. I'm going to escape to get out of this. I really just want uh, the tangency up here. So what you can do, again, I'm back to my white mouse cursor. I'm going to hit D for dimension. Here's a trick. I'm going to right click, right click, and then I get pick circle arc tangent. You'll see the default to center. So I'll pick tangency, and if I select up here, you'll see I actually get a little cross. Click on the circle there and click on the line, and now I get uh, a distance here, okay? So let's make this just one, okay? Now, if I zoom out, middle mouse button, scroll the middle mouse button, you will see that we still have uh, a blue line up here, and if I drag, I can still move it up and down. Um, the easiest way to work with this is actually just place some dimensions. It's not really important. D for dimension, um, and then click on this line here and uh, give that a dimension. Maybe just leave it at three just to round it up. Now it's fully defined. Now, um, now we, we, we are good to go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead here and hit Q for press pull, that sketch is sitting up there. I'm gonna select, see this is the difference. Now where I have that line going through, William, that now it kind of like splits the geometry up to two, but I can just click on those two edges and, uh, and then I can start dragging this cut through. Now, um, again, I get the arrow, I can drag on it that cut, or I can drag the other way, it becomes a solid. Um, another, kind of like going back to when we did the offset on the bottom of the hole here, Another good practice is instead of having a distance and instead of going to object like we did before, let's click all. And what all means is that now that cut will go through this part no matter how long we make that first extrusion. So all just means cut through anything. So uh, that makes it a little bit uh, more helpful here. All right. Uh, David asks, can you make rings and... I'm not sure what the second part is, to be honest, David. This is not my language. I'm just trying to use it. Um, yeah, if you're going to verify what that is. Okay, so we have um, now one cutout. But of course, if you're looking at the part, there's more than one. There's a lot of them, right? All these bumps. So a neat tool for that is using a tool called patterning. So I'm going to go down in the create, and I know sometimes um, that you um, that you can it can be a little hard to find things in these drop downs. I think it just takes a little bit of time to kind of like get used to it. But under the create is where we have the patterning tool, and we can go in and we can do a circular patterns. Now, if I select circular patterns, um, you, you of course get the standard menu up here. Um, and you will see that there's different things you can pick in here. You can pick faces, but for this case, if I select faces, would mean that I would have to select these three faces, what is not too much work, right? Uh, but I actually prefer, whenever I can, to select features. And features is what we have down here in this history tree down here. So if I select this feature that was to cut, I only have to select one, uh, and that is kind of uh, verified uh, like that. Shift middle mouse button to spin around. So we selected what we want to pattern. Now it's looking for an axis. Now you could select an axis like the blue axis you see right here. You can actually also just select an edge. That's the same thing, an edge to, to, to go around. 
Um, and when you do that, it defaults to three, but I mean, you clearly saw on the, on the little yellow thing I have here that we have more of three in than three. I am not gonna count them, but what happens if we put a 30 behind it? That might not be too bad, actually. You kind of like get the shadow here. And by the way, just a little added tip. You see how you have all these check marks? You could actually uncheck certain ones. If there's certain ones you don't want pattern, you could actually uncheck here and that will be eliminated from the pattern. A little extra goodie right there. But let me just show you what we got here. Hit OK. And now we end up with, uh, with kind of like a pattern on this thing. Now we're looking at this here. Uh, it actually looks like they're a little wide and a little deep. Well, we can always go back to that original sketch we had down here. Right click, hit edit sketch, and we can go back here and we can we can modify this. So maybe we make this one millimeter wide and maybe only go a half a millimeter in depth. Hit OK, and everything's going to update, and um, and that might look. Might look a little bit more uh, in the realm of uh, of what we want. So we're looking at this here versus the the real kind of like the, the real deal uh, right here. Okay, we're almost done uh, with this part. There's a couple of things I want to show you about it uh, that I hope uh, is somewhat useful. Um, and, and this kind of like goes back to in the beginning where we we're talking about rolling back in your, your history too, things can, can kind of blow up. Uh, oh, so uh, can you make rings and jewelry? Yes, I've actually got some requests for that. I think that's gonna be a, uh, a live stream uh, soon to do some, uh, some cool jewelry. Just don't show my wife. Haha, <laughs> can't afford that with a baby. Okay, so um, one of the things when you're looking at this part that I wanted to talk a little bit about is that this part in the real world, um, this would have broken edges on it, right? Like it wouldn't be sharp or you would cut yourself. Normally there's a little bit of rounded edges on this. And I actually got, I think I just got an email today asking me the difference between using fillets uh, versus uh, chamfers. So one is a round and one is a, normally a 40, 45 degrees. It really comes down to uh, what is the easiest to make. So I would say on the outside here, we probably use a fillet on the outside, but you probably would on, on, the, on this circle out here, but you would actually probably use a, a, a chamfer on, um, on this inside here. Um, all right, uh, Brandon is asking, do you recommend using rectangular patterns instead of a pattern on path for any straight line pattern, even if only pattern in one direction so create pattern uh, there is rectangular patterns and there is pattern on a path um, you know I don't um, that's a good question Brandon I mean, I'm, good question I think that I would you yeah normally I have only used rectangular patterns whenever you kind of like gotta go in one direction I've only used going along the path if I have like a like almost like the image is showing if you hover over it. Um, but you know what I don't think I don't think it matters if you have a straight line and you just got to go in one direction I think pattern on a path is this okay I think so yeah good question um, oh thank you David uh, yes we got a, a uh, a little baby girl here, uh, what is it, about 12 weeks old? Uh, absolutely awesome with kids and more kids. Love kids. I uh, appreciate that. All right. So um, now when we're talking about adding adding chamfers in here, there's a couple of different ways we can deal with this and, and, and fill it. One thing I wanted to show you is that if we go in and add a, a fillet, to this, so, the, so a fillet would be a round. You will see that when I click on that, it's looking for an edge. Now, it would be nice, but if I go in and click on one edge, then you will see that I get one fillet. And if I gotta sit around here and select all of them, you know, I mean, not that I have anything better to do on a Wednesday evening than sit here and click, but 
like I said before, I really like to be to be lazy. So what you can do instead is you need to be aware of there's some different selection tools up here. What I can actually do, and the easiest thing is actually to kind of like get on a on a, the right view. And I'm gonna mean the right view, I didn't mean the right right view, I mean like being in, in the right perspective to the part. So like a side view, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And if I drag a window, hold down the left mouse button and drag a window right over the edge, you will see that 120 entities were selected. Hold down shift middle mouse button. And there you will see we got all our edges. So I could have gone around and picked all of them, but man, that would have been, whew, that would have been 120 clicks. Uh, let's add, I don't know how, I probably can't make it very big, 0.5 maybe? That's even too big. 0.2. So that would add a nice little uh, fill around on this edge here. Now I of course also want that um, on the other edge. You could use mirror. So if you watched the live stream yesterday on YouTube, you will see how we could actually mirror this feature, this fillet over on the other side. But I wanted to show you another trick uh, with what I just did. Uh, if I go back to the left uh, here, um, and I do what I just did before, say I want to do a fillet, and I drag another rectangle, just making sure I get the edge. Now you'll see that 121 is selected on this one, and you're like, wait a minute. Um, so if I hold on shift middle mouse button spinning around, you'll actually see that I somehow also got this edge selected in here. Like, man, what I'm going to do now? Well, you can actually hold down control or command if you're on a Mac, hold down control and select that edge and it will undo the selection. So you get that? So if you select something, you can undo the selection by holding down control and selecting a selected edge and it's unselected. Of course, also select it again and it's added to it. So that's a little, little trick that hopefully uh, is useful. So now we can add um, this in here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about going back uh, into to the history of things. So, um, oh, Kevin asked a good question. Uh, please remind us um, about the difference between left and right, left to right to right to left drag. Right to left, left to right drag. Um, yes. It's just you and me sitting here. To be honest with you, I don't think, I think I used CAD for many years before I knew that there was a difference. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> so if I go in here, let's see if there's a good way to show this. Uh, let's go on the back view right here. So looking at this. So, and, I, and you know what? I don't think, Kevin, I don't think it's like something that you have to like master, master to remember because you know, one works one way, the other works the other way. If I'm going from left to right, and look at the color of the rectangle. Left to right, I'm holding down the left mouse button, I'm just dragging, and I let go here. Anything that was within the box has been selected. So left to right, everything that is within this box gets selected. You can kind of, as a zoom in, you can kind of see the blue from right to left, and it doesn't really matter if you're going from the bottom or up. See the color change? From, from, from left to right, right to left, see how it's yellow? From, from right to left, it's everything it touches. See how it selects everything, okay? So let me just open up a new part here. So a new part and open up a sketch and uh, Let's do uh, a couple of lines. Okay, so let's do this. So, um, left to right, anything that is within the box, what means in this case, nothing is within the box, nothing gets selected. But if we move over, this line gets selected. If we move over here, those two get selected and so forth. If we go the other way, 
those get selected because they are, it's touching that second line right there. Uh, it's not enclosed, where if I went the other way from here to here, it would only be the center one selected. I hope that was useful. Just one of those small tips. Good question. It's one of those things. Okay. Um. <laughs> William says, did you say do a couple of lines? Yes, I did say that. <laughs> no, I'm, my Canadian beer, that's the, that's the worst it gets. Maybe some Scots once in a while. Okay, let's get back to it. Let's get back to our project here. Um, so let's get back to the timeline. I want to add um, a chamfer to uh, up here because I kind of like want to break these edges here. Now, we already talked about selecting things. So you could uh, go in and let's go over to a view here and look from the side. You could maybe say, okay, if I can do this, can I uh, go to the chamfer tool and do a touch everything and, and select what I get. And, and you can see the select all the lines. Now you will also see, if I hold on middle mouse button spinning around, that it did select something internal, right? But we just learned that if you hold down control and Z, no, if you just hold down control and reselect the line that's been selected, it gets unselected. But there's probably more than one in here, I would think. It might actually work. Now we have this friend. Uh, so now we got 120 selected. And I'm just going to try it. I actually didn't try this. Point 0.1. Let's see if it will do that. No. So I selected other things. Probably it selected all these radiuses in here too. So it selected everything. It's because I got tangents. Okay, now you got me. Let's try to turn tangent chain off. And let's try that again. Because maybe it actually would work on the right side here. And let's just do tangent chains off. Do a selection like this. And let's make sure we get those internal. We don't want these. Hold down control. Unselect these two here. And this is part of the, the thread right here, right? So I got to kind of like just move around with that for a second. Make sure I get the right one. Holding down control, so I'm unselecting these circles. I want to show you a better way to do this in a second, but, you know, I just thought about it. Okay, let's try to make that point one. Let's see if it will solve it. See, it also select the bottom, so now that's actually, I only want the top. Okay, I'm going to abandon this because it doesn't look like it can't do it. Okay, so you could have thought you wanted to do this, uh, but it clearly... Uh, I can't do it right now. <laughs> uh, here's the way I would do it. Don't forget about this history tree down here. Uh, we can roll back, right? This this captures everything. So we can go all the way back to where we started with our disk. We can go back to putting our hole, putting in our thread and so forth. That means we can also get back to this point where we have our um, extrusion right here that we extruded all the way through. So now I can work with this timeline here, I can work on this. So if I go in here and I select a chamfer and I select those two edges I want and make them, I don't know, 0.1. Yeah, that's a nice little chamfer. And I hit okay to that, then uh, that is added. You will see though, that when I go to my, my uh, pattern that they are only on that first one that we just added to. It's not on the other ones. Well, that's not cool. Well, that's because we just got to add it to that. So if we go in here, we right click, hit edit that patterning feature. And remember, there's only one object selected. We could now hold down control. We should be able to go and be able to hold down control. Oh, I had features. That's why. Uh, and select the extrusion and select the, the chamfer. So those two are selected and hit OK, and then everything will update uh, and get that on. So that's one of the ways you can go back to your history tree. I can move through uh, the whole process here, uh, and we are back to uh, where we were before, with where we had the fillets, and now we have these, these chambers on here. 
Now, another thing that I probably would do to this part is actually a chamfer on the thread too. Right? You normally don't have uh, a sharp on a thread or you will pull the thread out. Do the same thing. We can move all the way back in the history tree. And this is how I would do it uh, to where the, at, right bef before the threading, and we could go in and we could add a, um, a chamfer on this edge. And I don't know how big we can make this one. Um, and when I hit OK, that will update with, um, with the thread here, and we will get that chamfer uh, displayed on the part. You can see these updates. It actually makes it a little bit bigger because the software is looking at the diameter. It actually changes the inside diameter. Um, I made this hole 21, but because we selected the diameter in the, let me just go back to that, in the thread in here, because we specified this size, Fusion actually changes the hole to the correct size. Um, so just be aware of that. That's the way it should be doing. So if you're looking at this thread and you're thinking that's absolutely ridiculous, that is why. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And you should see now that we get some kind of a uh, more decent fillet on, on that um, from that di diameter there. Um, one of the questions we got from William was, I think it was William who asked the question, things blowing up down here. And I've actually done a live stream on that. Um, and, and normally what happens is that if you start seeing yellow and red marks down here, you should really stop what you're doing and try to figure out what's going, what's going on uh, about it. Many times it's a smaller thing as going into a sketch, like this sketch here, <clears throat> where we did the rectangle, and you maybe just have to reattach uh, something. Let's say that we, we did something where suddenly this half a millimeter dimension comes from uh, this diameter here, right? If we suddenly did something, we made this into a hexagon or something crazy, uh, then Fusion could lose the reference right so that so that dimension that's normally what happens when you see things going yellow uh down in the tree and i will you know go back and actually if something breaks you can right click on it and it says in here what's wrong and it gives you a pretty good indication of uh what is wrong with that okay so uh that takes it to about the hour um the last thing i'm going to do to this part here is I am going to right click out in white space and I'm going to change uh, the appearance of this um, because anything in um, Fusion comes in as metal, which is fine, but this was actually plastic. So I'm going to go down here and click plastic. I'm just going to change the color here to a plastic gloss. Yellow is fine. And you can either drag it on the part or you can actually drag it right up here and uh, it changes the color of it. Doesn't do anything other, other than than that. Uh, so that was what I really had planned on showing in in this hour for for absolutely beginner. I hope that this uh, was was useful. We definitely got to hammer through some some different uh, different things in here. Thanks to you guys and your great questions. I truly truly appreciate you guys taking the time to join these live streams. And if you're watching watching the recording. Uh, of course, watching the recordings. I know that not, you know, if you're sitting in Europe right now, you should probably be in bed, right? Um, yeah, so I hope that this one was good. I hope that you uh, you learned a couple of tricks, something about the threading. Uh, we did some clearances in the back. We talked about some patterings. Um, and again, I just want to say that, you know, if if you're brand new to Fusion and you feel this is very overwhelming, don't sweat it, man. Like take this, if, if there was things in here that you felt like was way over your head, just see it as like good information to know about for later on. Uh, we will be doing another one of these tomorrow, doing a cam one on YouTube, but next Wednesday, same time, 8 p.m. Eastern, we will do another part. We'll break it into uh, the um, into this absolute uh, beginner stage. So uh, here was uh, kind of like the part we started out, like a little cap for a, a garden hose. And, uh, and here uh, is the finished part 
uh, of, of modeling something up with some, some patterning on it, some fillets, some chamfers. Uh, that is about it, folks. Um, I am going to end, unless somebody, unless somebody has one last question, because again, this is what we're trying to do with these absolute beginners. It's just any questions, ask me, and we'll fire it off. Um, take the last sip of my beer. I call it a Wednesday night. All right, guys, for watching the recording, thank you so much. For you guys who took the time to join uh, the live stream, really appreciate it. Um, if you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, be honest, man, put a thumbs down. We're just trying to add a little bit more value to uh, your Fusion 360 day. Until next time, folks, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much, and take care.